Welcome back to another finance video. Come for the finance and stay for some design thinking that helps the finance. It has been a little over five years since I purchased my very first stock on Robinhood and a lot had happened after that. So in this video, I would like to share some of my learnings, my experiences and a journey of how I use my design skills to help invest better to get a whopping 170% return in a single year. And of course, after I finally got the right investing mindset. Let's get started. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Yeah, you heard it right. I'm not a hedge fund manager. I was not econ major in school, but I am a designer and I'm good at solving problems. Once I frame investing as a challenging but also interesting problem, then I can solve it. If I can, so can you. After five years of learning and experimenting, 170% return to me seems pretty good so far, which I'm gonna walk you through it right now. Again, hold me accountable, just like my other finance videos, you don't need to smash the like button yet. Do that in the end if you actually learn something new from this video or find this helpful or insightful. Here's the agenda for this video and I'm gonna cover two things. First, I'm gonna start with some numbers. I'm gonna show you some returns, the math, the calculation, the result of my investing portfolio growth, and compare that against other indexes and ETFs in the stock market. And two, my journey, the process, what I did, what I learned, what had happened, what has changed, how did I get here? How did I get to this high return? Without further ado, let's dive right into it. <sighs> Number one, returns. Just for context, the return is measured from July 1st, 2020 to July 1st, 2021. Because July 1st, 2020 was the first time that I got a good grip of what investing really means. So that day marks a significant change in my investing mindset and philosophy, and hence the starting point of the calculation. I use TD Ameritrade so I can go to my balance tab and I can also filter out the date. This is the account value on July 1st, 2021. This is the value on July 1st, 2020, exactly one year ago. In this tab, I can filter and get all the deposits that I made to this account. Then I can copy and paste into my Google Sheet. Then I can do a quick sum calculation and we can get the total amount of money I deposited into this account between July 1st, 2020 and July 1st, 2021. The exact math to calculate the growth is quite complicated and difficult actually because I had multiple deposits and the new deposits help contribute the growth here and there. But I can have a rough estimate of the growth, which will be the end value on July 1st, 2021 minus the starting value, which will be July 1st, 2020 and minus all the deposits divided by the starting value, July 1st, 2020. And we will get 178%. Just a note here, subtracting the deposit is actually an essential step because if I don't do that, my percentage of return could be over 300%, which is hugely inflated and just purely wrong and absurd. I'm all about being responsible in delivering finance information, not some twisted math with attractive graph and huge numbers. So hope you guys understand the difference and why I did the math this way. So next, let's look at some other numbers from index funds, some other ETFs that you might be familiar with, SPY, QQQ, VTI, etc to see how other ETFs and indexes have been doing during the same time period. So with a simple query in Google Sheet, we can get the return for those major indexes and ETFs. As you can see, I got all the closing prices for July 1st, 2020, July 1st, 2021, for SPY, IWM, DIA, QQQ, and etc. So just quickly go through the SPY, which is S&P 500, IJR is the small cap in S&P, IWM, Russell 2000, DIA, Dow Jones, QQQ, mostly NASDAQ, mostly tech stock, but maybe the 100 top performers. VTI tracks the total stock market. ARKK is Kathy Woods Innovation Flagship Fund. QLD is the twice leverage, double leverage of QQQ, so it should be roughly twice as that. TQQQ is the triple leverage of QQQ, so three times as that. UPRO is the triple leverage of S&P, TNA is the triple leverage of small cap, FNGS is an ETF that tracks the FANG stocks, so Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Amazon, Google, and some other ones. And FNGU is the triple leverage of that, so roughly three times as that. 
maybe a little more. As you can see, I did not beat every single one because I just want to outperform the market, which I would say is probably VTI, the total stock market. As long as mine is more than that, I'm happy. Having all those numbers and comparisons is a great segue to number two, the journey and the process. I wanna talk about how I got here. Go through some histories and walk you through my journey. I can divide my five year quote, quote, investing journey into three periods. The early days is not as exciting or relevant actually because that was not really investing and you will see why. So the first period, 2015 to 2018, I would say this is the time that I was being right for the wrong reason. During that time, I was using Robinhood. I bought companies that I like and know about. So think about Apple, Alibaba, Nike, Salesforce. The performance was decent and that was the right part. However, here's the wrong reason. I bought them because I like them or know them and I was guessing they will be doing well, but that's not enough. That's not enough because I was not thinking myself as a shareholder and owner of those companies. I did not understand the fundamentals. I did not think through why I bought them, why I held them. That's why things could go wrong, and it did. It did because I sold most of them during the crash in the end of 2018, which in hindsight was the worst thing I can do, and I did it. And it also just proved that I was not investing because I sold most of them. So moving on, I realized what I did before was not working. So I tried something different leading to the second iteration of my quote, quote, investing strategy, the period between 2018 and 2020. I would say this is more like gambling with some logic. I learned a lot about technical analysis, drawing all kinds of shapes over the chart as if they're the absolute truth in the universe. RSI, MACD, 14 day EMA, 50 day SMA, 180 day SMA. It sounded like I absorbed a lot of knowledge and also try day trade, swing trade, trading natural gas ETF because I see the weather is correlated to the natural gas future price, which it kind of did until it didn't. And of course, here's the million dollar question after all those learnings. Did it work? Well, looking at my Robinhood account, it did not. A few bad trades on natural gas just f me up. Therefore entering a new era, 2020 and beyond, I cleared my mind hit the reset button, iterate again, and here is where my design skills come in. If investing is a problem or a need, I can solve it by coming up with a solution with design, through design process. So defining a problem, the need, the constraints, which is part of the research. So what's the need here? I need to grow my account consistently and outperform VTI. Or if you rephrase in the problem, my account was not growing, was not performing VTI between 2015 to 2020. What are some of the constraints? Well, I cannot spend too much time. I'm working full time in Silicon Valley as a designer. So the less time it takes, the better. So very easily, it rules out day trade, swing trade because they are way too time and energy consuming. Plus short term trading is for short term thinkers. And I tried that. Did it work? I don't think so. And as part of research, I read a book, One Up on Wall Street by Peter Lynch who ran the Magellan Fund that gave an average of 30% return for 13 years in a row. Very impressive. The book itself is also very riveting, incredibly informative, insightful, and enlightening. Totally changed the way how I would look at the world and how I should be approaching investing. And within the book, he also mentioned find your edge, meaning find the things that you know that other people don't. As part of the research, I need to understand what I'm good at, what I know that other people don't. Me, as a designer working in Silicon Valley, I understand the value of design, the value of technologies, how they both can create a lot of value to the world, to the society. That is my advantage. That is my edge. And of course, I need to continue iterating my investing strategy, which was part of the IDA prototype test. Do that again, again, and again, so that I can find out what works and what doesn't. Within 2020, I tried a few things. My strategy went from V3 to V4, V4.1, V4.2, learning about hedging with inverse ETFs like SQQQ and UVXY. I learned about option trading, call options, put options, spreads. I tried a few different versions and mixed that into my strategy, which are all part of the iterations. Speaking of options, I actually made a few videos about option trading basics and they seem pretty well received so far. So if you're interested, I'll have a link up here and in the description down below. That is the design process. That's how I apply the framework to my own investing journey. I don't want to make this video super long, so I can't cover everything. But if you want to see a deep dive into my strategy, leave a comment down below. I'm happy to make another video for it if there are enough people interested. 
All right, guys, that's my five-year investing journey and the fourth iteration of my strategy got me 178% return in just one single year. And I'm excited to see how far it's gonna take. Is investing still as complicated, confusing, or daunting as you thought? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you learned something new, find it insightful, useful, informative, congratulations. And hope I earned a big like from you for this video. If you want to see more finance videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep using design thinking to square up your finances. See you on the next video. Cheers!